Hello, I'm Kira Lael, reporting for YouthSpin. Today, I'm going to talk about the dangers of cybercrime and how to avoid it. But first, to be able to avoid being a victim of cybercrime, we first need to know what it is. The technical definition of cybercrime is any crime that involves a computer and a network. In real life, this usually plays out in the form of a phishing scam. Now, what is that? A phishing scam is where the criminal attempts to trick the victim into giving them access to sensitive information or money. This is the type of cybercrime we're going to focus on today because phishing is the most common type of cybercrime that affects the general public. Let's try to understand phishing a little better by exploring a scenario. Imagine the following. You receive an email from a man claiming to be a billionaire. He says he is secretly giving money away to strangers and asks you to send him your bank account information so that he can deposit a million dollars into your account. Now, do you think this is true? Probably not. A general rule here is if it's too good to be true, it, then, it, then it probably is. In reality, the scammer here is probably not trying to give you money, but instead trying to withdraw and steal your money. Let's look at a less obvious example of phishing. Say you get a text message from a number claiming to be Amazon. This number tells you that you need to confirm your billing information in the next hour in order for your package to ship and provides you a link for you to do so. Okay, so the first thing we notice here is the link. It says it provides a link for you to confirm your billing information. I would not press it. Some web pages can install malware just by pressing the link. I would look very closely at the link because it's likely it's not a real Amazon link at all. One trick that scammers often use to create fake web pages that look like real web pages is to replace any O's by zeros because they look almost the same in the URL. Another thing that we notice is the sense of urgency. Remember that the text message asks you to confirm your billing information in the next hour. Often, scammers will create a sense of urgency so that their target doesn't take the time to think it through and realize that it's a scam. Lastly, real Amazon might choose a more formal method of communication instead of text messages. If you're not sure whether or not it's real, going to your profile without using the link they provided, in other words, going to your browser and going to your Amazon page by looking it up, without using the link they provide, can help determine if a message is a scam or not. If there is a real problem with your account, the real Amazon web page will let you know and allow you to fix it right there. Take into account this scenario. What if your friend is unexpectedly asking for money over text or social media, for example? Of course, it's completely possible that your friend really is in need but it's also possible that someone hacked your friend. Some hackers can send messages from a different number as if they were someone else. So how do you know if it's your friend or if it's a hacker? I would call the friend and ask them about the money that they require and make sure to verify that the request is authentically from the friend this type of scam is unfortunately more common than we hope because the scammers here rely on the fact that you'd be very willing to help your friend. I want to leave you with one less example of phishing. This is something that's currently circulating Instagram a lot. In fact, I probably receive this exact scam an average of five times a week, which is a crazy amount. This is how it goes. I get an Instagram notification that someone tagged me in a post. When I go look at the post that I was tagged in, it says that I won an iPhone 13. It asks me to send my address along with other personal information so that I can get my iPhone 13 shipped to me.
Interestingly enough, when I scroll down and read through the caption, at the very, very bottom of the caption, I see other random usernames tagged, often over a dozen others. All these people got the same message and are also being told they won a phone. What I do when I receive these types of scams is that first I report the post as a scam and then I block the account. Remember, you can't win a contest that you never entered. This might sound really intuitive, but unfortunately many people fall into these traps. Well, what if you did enter into a contest? When you entered into the contest, there was probably information on how you would know if you won. And usually the way that they would let you know if you won would not be through an Instagram post. To recap, the most common type of cybercrime is a scam where the scammer is trying to trick you into giving them personal information or money. These can come as emails, text messages, or even social media, among others. Scammers usually rely on a sense of urgency or specialness to prevent the victim from pausing and thinking about the situation. We can take the scammer's biggest tool away from them by pausing and thinking critically whenever we feel pressure to send money or information. Thank you for listening. I'm Kira, reporting for Youthspin.